Don't make the mistake I did. It's four screws around the side. Don't take the ones off the top. Hold. There we go. So they're shipping them upside down now, and it actually makes it a lot easier to get them out of the box. So there we go. Now on the back side, there are should be four screws like here, here, and down there, just like that. Of setting it on the ground. It's a, it's a, it's a there we go. Corner here. So just lift it up. There we go. Even right on its prop flange. And then, whoops. Oh, there we go. Um, Let's see here, that goes over there. extension for your <laughs> is that what that's for mark that, that's your breaker bar <laughs> okay let's see if i can do you want to do i use that okay he's got a built-in breaker bar that's <laughs> 242 in there and we got a long 5 16 driver you in the Zenith kit is some 8th NPT to AN6 flare fittings. Um, so that's uh, okay. So, typically the hand tighten the valve filter? Uh, we use the same filter instructions that come with it once it makes contact then another half a turn. A single pipe. So but the top one here Actually, it's this way. The bottom one is your carb heat muff. It's just a single, just lets air come in, it comes out hot, goes up to the carb heat box. This is your cabin heat muff on the top here. And just start fitting it up in there. Two of them will go with a little bit of squeezing. I'll let you get your side set. Okay, there you go. All right. And I'm going to work on getting these two in here. And then pull the other one up with a uh, pair of pliers. And that's got it. That's what holds it on. There you go. This talk I often call... Um, unlocking some of the mysteries of the Bing carburetor. Uh, this is a little bit more complicated than a typical carburetor because it does automatically adjust the mixture for you as you uh, gain altitude and uh, descend and it keeps your mixture going into that Jabro engine at a, a fairly constant, uh, keeps it where it should be. Main jet is uh, screwed into this brass spacer is what they call it. So spacer threads into the carburetor body itself. We'll remove that out. And if this was an operating carburetor, you'd see a little spring in here that pulls the choke back to the closed position. You have to take that off the dome before you can get it apart. But once that is, a, these screws are out, then we can take the dome off of the carburetor. And there's just, uh, effectively all it is is a dome. There is a spring in there to assist pushing against engine vacuum. And then the needle itself is attached to the diaphragm uh, along with this piston. Uh, you start an inch and a half from the back of the sump. So what? Yeah. 
we'll just Clico this in place for now. And they're like that. Our oil cooler. Okay, our oil cooler is going to sit on here like this. The things you're trying to do is you want to get a real nice tight fit over the top of these and it shouldn't take as much trimming as it used to. Seeing a bunch of clamps holding that on like so. And you may have noticed in these instructions we have that it shows a front plate on the spinner as well as a back plate. That's correct. 